next topic is teaching new areas of law and preparing law students for a digital, globalized world. And the three co-presenters are Dr. Natasha Pushkana, who's a postdoc here at CHK Law, Dr. Angela Daly, now of Strathclyde, ranked number eight law school in the UK, uh, but formerly of CUHK Law, and Ms. Angel Fan of Clear R, uh, CUHK is teaching and learning unit. So I'll hand over to you now for that presentation. Thank you for the introduction, Michael. Uh, we actually don't have it pre recorded, so I will just share my PowerPoint file. Uh, just please give me a moment. Right. Sorry. All right, is everybody able to see that? Um, yes, okay. we can, we can. Okay, great, thank you so much. All right, so today um, my co-authors and I will be presenting on our paper, as you had uh, noted, student as producer, teaching new areas of law and preparing law students for a digital globalized world. When we were doing our study and also implementing the innovative pedagogy, we were particularly cognizant of the mission statement for CUHK for the 21st century global citizen. And so you will see that uh, underlining element represented through our presentation. So first, the presentation is structured um, as such. We will give a very brief background on what the student as producer approach. Um, but given the past uh, presentations today so far and what Michael mentioned about Mike Neary's work, I will go through it very speedily. And then I will focus on the theoretical framework for our study, bring up the research question and method that we use to conduct our evaluation on the efficacy of student as producer approach to building um, career skills among students and also getting them to understand the course material better. And then Angel will be talking about the field observations that we gleaned during the study and also how we were able to internationalize the curriculum. And then we will end with a discussion of our main recommendations from our findings and a brief excerpt from our paper. All right, so first, oh, sorry, let me minimize this, this is, okay. So first, to define the student as producer approach, obviously there was a pedagogical approach developed in the UK, uh, particularly spearheaded by Mike Neary, uh, first at the University of Warwick and then University of Lincoln, and it did focus on research-engaged teaching, where it emphasized that students and teachers collaborate to produce new knowledge and meaning. And so here, the theoretical framework that they used for the approach came out of Marxist theory, critical pedagogy, and Walter Benjamin's critical commentary author as producer, where he went, uh, sorry, called out against marketization of higher education, and, and specifically the concept of the student as consumer. Rather, he harked back to Humboldt's model of organic scholarship, where teaching should be more loosely structured and focus on the Socratic dialogue. And as legal educators, we know how effective Socratic dialogue can be while we're teaching uh, law in class and getting students to be able to think on their feet, to be confident presenters, and in that way, prepare them for their careers where they will not have direct guidance all the time. And so ultimately this emphasizes the student-teacher partnership where the student value of voice is equally valued. And we can glean a lot of uh, new ideas from the unique perspectives and energize the disciplinary concepts. And, and in that way, that's how we can generate new understandings within the discipline. And then it also emphasizes practical knowledge and experience. So it exposes students to multicultural scenarios relevant for preparing them for their careers. And then it capitalizes on this idea of cognitive surplus, which is the abundance of assessments students produce each term. And so, sorry, I will just, uh, okay. 
Sorry, I just wanted to add that for those assessments, generally students have mentioned to me that they tend to be a very limited use. And so under the student's producer approach, it becomes the first iteration of an ultimate contribution to disciplinary knowledge. And through a successful use of this approach, it would build intrinsic motivation within students as ATJ Fellowship was able to very uh, clearly exemplify. Uh, and it also increases student engagement where it builds their sense of responsibility in their own education and prepare them for being a global citizen in the 21st century. And here are some of the skills that have been thrown out as the, sorry, have been mentioned as the primary skills to have in this new millennium, which is of course, critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, communication, having literacy in information, media, and technology, and also the notion of being flexible and adaptive within the scope of their courses, coursework, I mean, and careers. And through that also it would build collective knowledge and in that way move the disciplinary, uh, discipline of legal education to a much uh, further plane. And so thus far the evaluation for student as producer approach has focused on information technology, foreign language courses and social sciences. And so our uh, study within Professor Daly's The Internet and the Law course is actually a novel contribution in terms of how this pedagogy can lead to effective learning and preparing of students for their careers. And in terms of that cognitive surplus, Shirky identified four values that provide the parameters for the type of class activities that you can have and who are the beneficiaries of the value gleaned from those particular activities. So the first value is personal. And so in Professor Daly's course that came across, uh, represented that by the students presenting on their independent research topic and peer reviewing each other's presentations. And so as you can see, they did have a uh, social interaction by peer reviewing, but ultimately it focused on the individual student improving on their own work and hence personal. And then for the communal value, this was uh, through our activity of problem solving case studies over Google Docs. Here, Professor Daly assigned them to teams and within them, they work together uh, to answer certain questions provided by the teaching team to analyze the specific case study. And then for the communal value, it tends to only really benefit within that group. Um, so it's somewhat limited in its scope of its intention of what it's meaning to do. Then for the public value, well, we have the Wiki Juris Project, and this is an open access textbook where the students are able to write passages about the different concepts that they learn in class. And especially for a course on the internet and the law, which is a new area of law, this activity is very um, important to do, given that the existing literature is quite scanty at this moment. And so after vetting by the teaching team, this can also be published and shared with others in the institution or even other institutions or just generally the public on the World Wide Web. As long as you have a link, people are able to access it and in that way they could benefit even though they didn't themselves participate in the activity. And lastly, there is a civic value, which was very well represented by the con um, participation in the Cirilla project, which is the open access database on digital rights in law, uh, sorry, digital legal rights in uh, around the world. And so the students in particular were very excited to be able to contribute to something so meaningful, but at the same time, they were somewhat daunted by the fact that everybody around the world who can access that website of Cirilla Project would be able to read their work and they didn't feel 
initially that confident that their work would be enough. But through the guidance of the teaching team, they started to build that confidence, which is something we do want out of our law students to prepare them for their careers. And so besides these four main activities, the internationalization of curriculum and guest speakers helped us successfully achieve the student as producer approach in the course. And so our research question for evaluating mainly was how do students respond to the student as producer approach? And we had some questions of, well, do they find it effective for their understanding of course material? Do the related course activities help build the skills needed for their careers? And we used a mixed methods design, which included field observations, a survey of 26 Likert type questions, and a qualitative interview. For the survey, 14 uh, students volunteered to take it. And of those 14, two consented to an in-depth interview. And uh, as you'll know on the slide that the survey instrument was found to be highly internally valid. And so now my colleague Angel Fan will talk a little bit more on the descriptions of the field observations we uh, found and how the curriculum was international. Thank you so much. Thank you. So in this part, I'd like to talk about the uh, collaboration between CLEAR and Professor Angela Daly being one of the collective efforts to foster an alignment of the university vision and mission to enhance the quality of teaching and learning and to encourage global citizenship and international perspectives in the uh, local students and non-local students. So in the implementation phase, um, altogether, I um, was very honored to, um, to sit in uh, Professor Angela Daly's uh, lectures, altogether 11 of them, um, to observe the class activities. And we also had um, unstructured interviews, of, I put it here, as pre-lecture and post-lecture discussions. So during the uh, discussion, we talk a lot about um, um, how to improve, I mean, enhance teaching and learning. So some suggestions were made on how to better arrange seating, for example, among international and local students, um, improving questioning techniques uh, for the, I mean, uh, from the students' perspective perspective and also to devise activities to encourage students participation and interaction during the class exercise where Google Documents was used as a discussion platform. And the whole collaboration was uh, in fact under the uh, huge umbrella of the uh, internationalization at home strategy. So if you're interested, please go to um, Billion and Jones 2015, a very uh, widely uh, cited article. And um, as for in CUHK, we have devised um, this integrated framework for all faculties to, um, to use it as a reverence, and it is adapted from the Oxford Brookes University's uh, internationalization toolkit. And as you can see, uh, there are some elements that um, we do hope all faculties um, to, to take reference to. So what are the elements of an internationalized curriculum? Six, next slide, please. Oh, Thank you. So um, there are altogether five areas of focus in IOC uh, at course level. Out of these five, I'd like to concentrate on the three um, that we identified in Professor Angelo Staley's course, and they are um, the course materials, learning activities, and digitalization. In the next slides, uh, you will see um, the Cirilla project um, just now, uh, Natasha has mentioned, and if you're interested, please scan the QR code and have a, a more detailed look of it. So for the learning activities, there were video conference and um, exchange students from University of Yale um, were, Sorry. were, it's okay, <laughs> were invited to interact with the uh, CRHK law students. And I'd like to focus more on the digitalization side because the use of uh, the digital tools, uh, that is Google Documents as a discussion platform for class activities, uh, it's, it's, I would say is a huge success. And in the next slides, you can see uh, it's not, it's nothing very uh, surprising because uh, now that we um, keep promoting the use of uh, virtual exchange. So this is uh, Professor Roderick Graham uh, talking to uh, CUHK law students. And I was the one taking the, the photo as, a, as an uh, observer. So why choose an online editing platform? 
uh, we believe that it gives uh, both students and the um, course instructor flexible time for co-editing. And uh, the collective effort uh, from this um, platform became a meaningful output. It is also used as a facilitation of uh, IAH. So as you can see in this slide, um, uh, again, I took these two photos. You, you can see uh, the students were sitting in, in small groups and there were pre-assigned um, discussion questions um, designed by Professor Angel Daly before the lecture. And during the lecture, they would have approximately 30 minutes, sometimes 45 minutes to answer these questions with Professor in the classroom to give them feedback. So um, the interaction- Sorry to uh, interrupt, but we sorry? just got a reminder of how little time we have left. So let's oh, I see. Uh, skip sure. ahead to the challenges we discussed and then maybe during okay. the- Of more. course. So for the challenges, um, from using this Google document would be uh, we need to prepare a lot beforehand and the in-class monitoring together with the teacher's timely feedback uh, would be crucial too. But uh, what I want to say is the students' responses being very positive uh, after um, the whole 11 lectures. So the next slide you can see if the uh, students said um, they felt self-motivated, they could feel the peer support uh, because they can co-create knowledge and the ownership as well because the uh, the output from the Google document was later um, published onto uh, the open access textbook. So it also uh, promoted the 21st century uh, skills and also global citizenship. So now how about we talk about um, the discussion, oh, okay. Natasha? All right. So. From our findings, we came up with five basic recommendations that we'd feel uh, help bring, uh, aid in the effective implementation of a collaborative and internationalized form of teaching. So first, it was giving explicit explanation on how collaborative elements connect to course material. And as part of that, also hold guided discussions after guest lectures so that the students are able to reflect and understand how it can connect to their work even if they don't see the direct application to their research interests. And then to diversify an increased number of assessments throughout the term. And so uh, with that earlier presentation where the students made their own video assignments, I feel like something like that would also help students be able to start building towards a main contribution to the discipline of law. And then have class activities to increase social bonds where they are able to mingle more and share their own unique experiences because we did have a good number of international exchange students within the course. And so we're able to get more information directly from them about other national jurisdictions. And lastly, have students identify their career goals so their guidance can be better directed throughout the term. And I'm pretty sure we're out of time, but I'll just quickly read this excerpt and it'll be done. Uh, to accomplish the shift into student as producer approach, we have used pedagogical structures such as scaffolding approach, tools such as digital collaborative platforms and an internationalized curriculum. Together, they have helped form an enriched environment for students to think critically, access and respect different perspectives and strive forwards to becoming an independent, adaptive and productive global legal scholar. And so these are the references for anyone who would like to read some more about the basis of the study. And we say thank you very much and questions are welcomed. Yes, thanks very much, uh, Natasha and, and Angel and uh, to Angela. Um, so yes, how about some questions? Oh, should I stop sharing? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, oh, I think oh, I did. Oh, Angela, I can see you. Already. Okay, sorry. Thanks. Again, can I just? I've got a couple of questions. Can I just lob on in to give people time to think? Uh, and so, this idea of using the wiki, uh, wiki juris thing. So, in a way, um, what your project seems to have in common with all the other projects we've heard about this afternoon is some kind of collaboration. One of the distinctive features of your collaboration is that the students, the knowledge the students produce is put into this document. And, uh, you know, 
what you would think is that that's a good thing. It's making good use of the digital technology because that kind of, that gives students time to think and carefully craft the knowledge they're producing. So it should lead to a more higher quality contribution. Did you, did you find that? Well, okay, is Angela here? Because she could probably speak more uh, directly to this, but from my observations of the course, the students did appreciate that they could improve upon their earlier work through the feedback given by Professor Daly and the teaching assistants. And so by the end of the term, the final product was something that they felt much more proud of and more confident in being able to share it with other people. Um, yeah, and thanks. Um, I'll just add a little bit to that. Um, yes, I think um, one thing that I didn't uh, expect was that the students would actually be quite reluctant initially to um, upload um, their own or material that they had created. Um, and so at the very beginning, I mean, part of the scaffolding uh, was for me and other members of the teaching team um, to collate their um, responses, uh, to, uh, firstly to set questions, that then that, that would guide their research, then um, to look at their responses, collate them, uh, check them for accuracy, and generally kind of polish them. So while I think that the students, before they would go on the um, Wikijura site, so I think while the students did um, improve in that uh, throughout the semester, um, it, I think it still required um, input from people who were more experts, such as the teaching team, uh, to make sure that the contribution in the end was of a very high quality. Now, um, as you mentioned, I've moved, I moved institution um, this academic year, so I'm not teaching the same course and so on, uh, but I would have hoped otherwise that their, their contributions could have been built on by the next year's cohort um, so um, and that might have made the, that next year's cohort more confident when they knew that the contributions were from their predecessors. Yeah. That would have been really good wouldn't it just to that building on. In fact we've had several new questions but they'll need 30 second answers I'm afraid because um, we're coming to the end of the time. Why, why, why producers not collaborators? Uh, because to kind of uh, fit within the student as producers um, uh, framework, <laughs> but they were collaborators as well. Okay. Productive so, collaborators, maybe. Okay. Two, were there challenges to assessing students on the course, giving fair credit to student contributions on collaborative work? Uh, yes. Um, well, yes and no. Um, I ensured that the uh, assess that the parts of the course that were being assessed would be assessed kind of um, in line with categories of recognised assessment by the university or by the faculty. Um, but some of the additional collaborations, for instance, the contributions to the textbook in class were not assessed or accessible. And some students, I think, did express um, some uh, disquiet about whether you know their or how their own contribution should be recognized even if not assessed um, so there was I think this might also reflect the law students often being quite competitive with each other um, that they weren't as seem, they didn't seem to be as used to kind of making um, or collaborating with each other um, and I think they were quite interested in their own uh, work be, that being attributed to them even if it wasn't assessed. Thanks, Angela. Can I just can I just tell you there are two more questions? You won't have time to answer them, but I'll just tell you what, that they're, they're here. Um, so could it be extended to a big class and schools that don't have good resources? That's one question. And then the other is, you know, does it unduly benefit people who, who've already, you know, who've got better language learning and learning skills? Um, I'm, I'm afraid we won't have time for an answer though, but I'll just tell you those questions are there and they're good questions. But I'm yes. afraid you're going to have to set up for the next presentation. Um, Michael, if you can like let us know who asked them. Yes, it's um, well, in fact, it's Summit. Summit, some, uh, if you don't sign. Okay, sorry. sorry. No, I was just basically oh. saying because yeah. I have used classroom technologies for big, big classrooms, and so Google Docs would help and work successfully in a big classroom. That's so. great. We're going yeah. to have to move. Thank you very much indeed. That was wonderful. And now we're going to move on to our next presentation, please. Um, uh, 
So thank you very much indeed to Natasha, Angela and Angel.